please know, whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Madison, Wisconsin. I said to a few of you who are in here in the sanctuary, I think maybe you deserve extra credit today for getting through the rain, the race, and the holiday. So, welcome. We're glad you're here, and we're glad to have all of you who are also watching today by live stream. The complete bulletin, including the community prayers, can be found by scanning the QR code that is at each entrance and also on the back of the card in your pew. You can also follow the service on the screen here in the sanctuary, and there are a few large print copies for those of you who wish to have one of those. We do encourage you to visit the Just Bakery table following worship today. Linda is in the back with bread and lots of goodies. And it's a great way to give yourself permission to buy sweets and know you are doing it for a good cause. So we encourage you to do that this morning. Script cards will also be available following the service today. Um, also in the back of the sanctuary, you can purchase script cards which will help you make ordinary purchases in your life with the script cards, and then a percentage of that comes back to the church. As we begin worship today, may God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, gather us together in a spirit of learning, curiosity, and transformation. stand in body or spirit as we join our voices in the call to worship. We come to worship to encounter God individually and with others in community. May we be open to the ways God will be to us. We come to worship to hear the stories of our faith and learn for our lives. May we learn from Nicodemus about moving from theory to practice. We come to worship to be inspired for our daily living. May the triune God 
creator, redeemer, and sustainer, abide in us and inspire us to live with justice and compassion. When Jesus left his disciples, he did not leave them alone. He promised that the Holy Spirit would be present in their lives, and he gave them an amazing gift, his peace, the peace of Christ. Through the gifts of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, this gift is ours to have and to share with others. We do that now as we join our voices together in these words. May the peace of God be with us all. And you are invited to greet those around you with a wave and include our friends on live stream. Please join me in the unison prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Renew us by your continued creative acts in the world. Your presence among us is a blessing and a gift. Open us to receive, 
ponder and grow as we communicate with your people. In voice, body, and spirit, we worship you and invite your transforming power to be alive among us and at work in us. Here we are, O Triune God. Here we are. Amen. We now invite all the children to come forward and all those who are children at heart. My stool is somewhere else in the building. Okay, that's right. Come on up and have a seat. Mart is coming up. All right, I'm gonna sit here. So, it was raining out there. Did anybody get wet on your way in a little bit? So I'm gonna ask you to pretend with me a little bit today, okay? I want everybody to take a good look around this room, okay? Take us up to the ceiling, to the back corners, okay? I invite everybody to take a good look. Let's say, all right, let, I'm gonna share, confess something. When I was your age, one of my jobs on the farm was to water the heifers in the back pen, okay? And that meant taking a hose over to the the big, there's a big tub there and had to fill it with water because the heifers would drink all that water during the day or during the night. So I had to put the hose in the tub and then I have to go over to the faucet and turn it on. And then I would have to stand there by the tub until it was full. Do you know why I had to stand there until it was full? Any ideas? So it wouldn't overflow. And because Jeff had a lot on his mind, if he left that tub and walked away and, oh, I'll do something else, you know what Jeff would do? Any ideas of what Jeff? Um, he would enjoy something that what did he do? He would forget to turn the water off. And then the water would run all night. And it would fill the heifer pen. And then I would have, there would be large words from my father the next day. Okay, and that sort of got me to thinking about this rule. Let's say, let's say somebody, maybe somewhere, they left a faucet run, okay? And if it worked, this room would literally fill all the way to the ceiling with water. Can you picture it? Okay, everybody picture it? Filled with water all the way up to the ceiling, okay? Any guess how much water that would be? I did a little math. Okay, Marta? I think it would be 50 feet. 50 foot, okay. That's a good, that's a good, good guess. The, where it's about 32 feet tall and about 88 feet long and 71 feet wide, but there's like nooks and crannies, okay. Heather? 10,000 gallons, that's a great guess. It's a little more than that. Jenny? That's a great guess, but it's a little more than that. 25,000, 25, a little bit more than that. Do you want to give it a try? 50,000. 1,500,000 gallons, give or take a gallon or two. <laughs> okay? So picture this room filled with 1,500,000 gallons of water. Oh, my dad would be so mad, okay? <laughs> Can you picture that? So, filled up. All right, I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. Okay, John, we'll take Johnny, okay? So here is your bucket. Okay, hold that up so everybody can see the bucket. Okay, that's a, a five gallon bucket, okay? So, Johnny, your job today, this room is filled with water. It's your job to empty this room, okay? So every day after school, your mom and dad are gonna send you back here to get a bucket full of water out of this room and dump it down in Lake Mendota. It's over there. Or dump it in Monona, I don't care, okay? It all comes together. So that's your job every day after school is to come down to church, because you're busy, you're a busy guy. You can do it once a day, right? Scoop up a bucket of five gallons of water and take it down to Lake Mendota and dump it in there. 
Okay. Yes, Heather? We're pretending here, Heather, okay? <laughs> We're pretending. Okay, so Johnny's job, he's got a job. Do you accept the job? Yes, Johnny accepts this job. Every day after school, he has to come over here at church, take a bucket of water out, and dump it in Lake Mendota, or Mendota. All right, how many days is that gonna take Johnny to empty out this room? It's going to take you 822 years. Uh, okay, let's say you come in the morning, before school and after school. That'll shorten it down to about 411 years. Um, you, you remember, you said you remember, you said you were up for the task. Yeah. Okay. You didn't know what you were committing to, right? Okay. Seriously, if Johnny took one bucket out of this room every day, it would take 821.72 years to empty this room. I what if I did a few buckets? <laughs> <laughs> Three buckets. It would take you a long, long, long time. Okay? I'll take the bucket. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your help, Johnny. And it's pretty dry in here, so obviously you did your job, right? Okay, so it would, take him, it would take Johnny a really, really long time. Every day coming down, taking one bucket out, taking one bucket out, okay? And you go, what are we talking about, Jeff? Okay, so this room filled with water is sort of like God, okay? This room filled with water is sort of like God. You could come to God every single day and scoop some of God out to try to talk with God, to try to praise God, to try to thank God. Every single day when we do that, when we go to pray, it's sort of like taking a bucket and scooping a little bit of God with you. And like Johnny, scooping it up. You could do, go to God every single day of your entire life, and there would still be more God. Okay? I'm going to ask the crowd here and ask them to raise their hand and look carefully some of, the, some of these folks are a little older than me, okay? Some of these folks are a lot older than me, okay? And I'm going to ask them, raise your hand, how many of you have God figured out yet? Okay? Raise your hand nice and tall. Do you see any hands? No. Because every day they're scooping up a little bit of God and trying to get more about what God is, okay? So if you're, if you're having a hard time understanding who this God is, so are they. But that doesn't mean every day we go and scoop a little bit more of God. Because we can do it our whole life and not figure out all of what God is. Because God is so immense. All right, let's pray. Loving and immense God, thank you for being there. Help us to learn from you and help us to take a little bit of you with us every single day. Amen. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny. You guys can go back to your seats. Our scripture lesson for this morning is John 3, verses 1 through 8, from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, 
Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations that live in all our hearts be held in the strong embrace of your loving presence. Amen. In a mother's womb were two babies. One asked the other, do you believe in life after delivery? The other replied, why, of course. There has to be something after delivery. It seems we are obviously here to prepare ourselves for what we will be later, and that we have capacities that are meant for something greater than here. Nonsense, said the first. There is no life after delivery. What makes you think there is? The second said, well, I am going to suppose that since we have eyes and legs and mouths, that there is a world outside that has more light than here, so we can see and where we will walk about with our legs and eat with our mouths. I mean, why would we have legs if we weren't ever going to walk? Or eyes if we weren't ever going to have light and see? Maybe there will be many other things that we can't understand now. The first replied, that is absurd. You are just engaging in wishful thinking and hoping things will get better. This is all there is. Who needs to walk? And eating with our mouths? Ridiculous. The umbilical cord supplies nutrition and everything we need. And since the umbilical cord is so short, life after delivery is to be logically excluded. The second one insisted, well, I think there is something more than this outside and beyond this womb. Some sort of longing is in my heart to see and walk freely and eat and enjoy things. I mean, why would we have these legs and mouth and eyes anyway? Where did we get the longing to use them if we weren't meant for something more? Maybe we won't need this physical cord anymore. The first replied, nonsense. And if there is life, why has no one ever come back from there? Delivery is the end of life. And in the after delivery, there is nothing but darkness and silence and oblivion. It takes us nowhere. No, said the second one, surely we will meet our mother and she will take care of us. The first replied, mother, you actually believe in a mother? That's laughable. If a mother exists, then where is she now? The second said, she's all around us. We are surrounded by her. We are from her, and it is in her that we now live. Without her, this world we are in now would not exist. The first said, well, I don't see her. So it is only logical that she does not exist. To which the second replied, sometimes when I am in silence and I focus and I really listen, I can perceive her presence, hear her loving voice calling down from above. 
in this contemporary parable whose author is unknown from what I could find, the first baby thinks they know everything there is to know based on what they have experienced in the womb. Life is defined by darkness, the short cord, and the limited information they have received. The second baby believes there might possibly be more to know and to have beyond the darkness, apart from the short cord and from the perceived presence of the mother that is beyond them. The first baby is guided by absolutes and limits. The second baby is guided by a sense of curiosity, creativity about the possibilities, and a sense of connectedness with something greater than itself. In our text today, Nicodemus is a person who can model for us something of what it means to approach life like that second baby in the parable. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a member of the Jewish ruling council before he met Jesus. His life in that community was centered around upholding religious laws and traditions. He would spend most of his time studying and interpreting the scriptures for others. And as a Pharisee, he would have been well-respected for this work. He would have been well-respected for adhering to the Jewish law. But when Nicodemus met Jesus, his beliefs and his traditional way of experiencing God, I think must have just been blown open into a new way of thinking. Jesus opened his eyes and his heart, it seems, to a deeper way to connect with God. Not that what Nicodemus had been doing was wrong or wasn't a, a way to connect with God, but Jesus showed him that at that point in his life, there was another way to connect with God. Nicodemus knew that Jesus was also steeped in the Jewish tradition and the laws, and yet he seemed to have this very personal relationship with God. And he ministered to people in ways that touched their lives with healing and with justice. With Jesus, Nicodemus witnessed miracles and signs that were different from anything he had seen before. Jesus turned water into wine. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, even raised the dead. Jesus made a real difference in the lives of hurting people. These signs pointed Nicodemus led him to believe that there was more truth and wisdom for him to know in relationship to God. But Nicodemus is older at this point in his life, and yet he has a sense of curiosity, it seems, because he questions Jesus when he says, how can anyone be born after having grown old? What do you mean to be born of water and the Spirit? In other words, Jesus, I have already learned a lot in my life. I have learned a lot about God and the religious tradition. What more could possibly be out there for me? And yet Jesus says there is always more to have in relationship with God. Can't you sense the presence of the mother beyond what you can see in the darkness? Beyond the short cord? Can you hear her loving voice calling to you from beyond where you are right now? Nicodemus is one of those ancestors in the faith who, at least in this scenario, models for me how I want to be in my relationship with God until I take my last breath, hopefully at an old age. 
I want to be open-minded and curious and willing to seek new truth, even if that means questioning my beliefs or questioning the way I have always done things. I want to demonstrate courage and humility in my actions. And I want to live knowing that there is always a value of spiritual growth and transformation that is possible. Some years ago, I participated in a training course for counselors and for pastors in spiritual formation that was intended to give us tools that would help us identify what was called our core self or true self, meaning that place of inner knowing that is God. In this model, true self is identified by eight qualities known as the eight C's. Compassion, curiosity, calmness, creativity, courage, connectedness, confidence, and clarity. Now, we tend to spend a lot of our time with other internal parts guiding us. These are the parts, the voices that we have in our head that judge us or that cause us to doubt ourselves and, and our actions. But in this model, those parts are called the false self because they are not from God. They are what we have created in our doubts, in our judgments. And in those moments when we can access even a little bit of one of those eight C words, we are more likely in our true self, that place where we are growing and thriving with God. When we can find a little space to open up to curiosity, or compassion, or creativity, sometimes we can open to God in a new way. Here's some questions that you might ponder that I have found helpful to think about in relation to my true self and opening up to God. Are you curious about what more is there for you in relationship to God? Do you have moments when you touch a bit of calm or creativity or confidence? Are there sometimes brief moments of clarity when you are questioning something? Does your heart swell with a bit of compassion when you give or receive a kindness? I believe that in these moments, God might just be speaking to us, longing to connect with us in new ways. And like Nicodemus shows us, these gifts are not connected to any particular age or stage in our life. We are always in the possibility of being born anew by the Spirit. So may we all remember the wisdom of the babies. Sometimes when I am in silence and I focus and really listen, I can perceive her presence and hear her loving voice calling down from above. Amen.
Now we come to the time in our worship together where we're together in prayer. We do this in three ways. I will offer a pastoral prayer, and then we'll be in silent prayer, taking those cares and concerns that we have to God, knowing that God hears all prayers. And then we'll pray together in whatever language and whatever version the prayer that Jesus taught us. Let us pray. Gracious God, remind us that in Jesus, you give us a story and a faith based on surprises. In the beginning, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was surprised in Nazareth. In the end, Mary Magdalene is surprised in the garden on Easter Sunday. Gracious God, help us to be open to the ways that you always and everywhere are speaking to us in surprising ways. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Sometimes we think we are too old to learn new things or change our ways. And our ancestors in the faith show us time and time again that the Spirit moved them to be generous with their lives and with their gifts. May each of us respond in our own ways with giving that is right for us at this moment in our lives. Gifts can be made through Realm, on the church website, by mail, or left in the back boxes at each of the entrances. Thank you for your generosity. the Lord who inclined 
dedicate all our gifts. In grace, we bind ourselves to those who are looking for new life. In hope, we bind ourselves to those who live in despair. In peace, we bind ourselves to all damage by violence and hate. And in gratitude, we offer all our gifts to meet the needs of our world, O oh God, and in the work of justice, love, and wonder as you build your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
when our capacity for human knowing runs out, and that can happen at any age or stage of our life, may we not give up, but rather remember that God is always calling us into deeper relationship. In love and by the guidance of the Spirit, may we leave today more assured of our capacity for compassion, curiosity, calmness, creativity, courage, connectedness, confidence, and clarity. Go in peace. Amen.